Hi guys, it's Danny. Alrighty, today I have another interesting discussion for you guys. And you might have already read the title. It's a shocker. Anyway, so the idea is that orchids can be induced into blooming by shocking them. Now this is something that along the years I heard from some of my viewers mentioned, but I kind of brushed it off because yeah, I thought it was just an idea that somebody said once, but lately I have the feeling it's snowballing out of control, actually. And this is because I did get a comment yesterday on my previous video regarding shocking orchids into blooming. And I remember another message that I received from one of my viewers, and this is a message that kind of made me a little mad. And this refers to orchid beginners who get put down by, let's say, more experienced growers on forums regarding why they actually bloom their orchids. So according to my viewer, she read a forum in which a beginner showed pictures of their blooming orchid and the more experienced growers said that the orchid bloomed because of the shock, because of bad care, not because of good care. Well, there is a whole bunch of things wrong with that statement. First. You put down a beginner, shame on you, you should never do that, you were once a beginner as well. Second, not only you're not helping with morale, you're not actually helping with the hobby itself for that person, you don't give explanation for what you mean. Third of all, you're stating a very inaccurate thing, as we will discover during this video. And fourth of all, you are just smug, and whenever you're smug while saying something wrong, it's just silly. You are allowed to be smug if you know what you're talking about. I'm just kidding. I'm, I just said that because some people sometimes comment that I do seem smug and I do seem like a know-it-all. It's not my intention. I might come off that way. I don't know. I don't see myself from the outside. I'm sorry if I do, but at least I do try to do my homework and not say stupid stuff. And I always start with, I think. That's the key word. I think a lot. Doesn't make you right. Let's get into the subject though. Now, let me just start off by saying that whoever said this shock thing first, I don't think they had bad intentions. I think they were just trying to explain themselves better and to try to make somebody else understand some stuff in a particular situation. But I just feel this thing snowballed out of control and it's used more and more out of context. And people are starting to do some crazy things to their orchids to make them bloom. So I really want to address this issue and get to the bottom of it and see if it's actually true or false. Alrighty, so let's define a shock. What do you understand by a shock? Well, personally, like I told you in my previous video, the one from yesterday, a shock is a setback of the orchid, loss of roots at some point, loss of leaves at some point. That's a shock in my eyes. However, people seem to refer to shocks as changes in external factors. And I'll give you some examples. The dry, cool rest that we give to deciduous dendrobiums, it's considered as a shock apparently by some people on forums. And also the cool down that we give Phalaenopsis orchids to make them bloom. So from the messages that I received from my viewers, this is what I kind of understood they were referring to. And obviously they did read this somewhere on a forum, so somebody said it. So let's start with these things and let's see if they really are shocks. Alrighty, I'll take for example the Phalaenopsis orchid because it's the most common one. Let me just say that Phalaenopsis orchids, the hybrids, the complex hybrids, are really the most deceiving orchids out there, really, and I'll get to that later in the video. So whatever you experience with a Phalaenopsis, I don't think you should generalize it for most orchids. Not because the Phalaenopsis is strange in any way, no, but I'll get to it. But let me first start with why Phalaenopsis orchids are triggered by the low temperatures and figure out if they're triggered by the shock or there's a different reason for it. Now because the Phalaenopsis orchids we find in the stores are usually hybrids, it's pretty hard to trace the original species. However, there are a few hybrids which are simpler, easy to trace one of the parents at least. And here I have the j Ho Spin Girl. She's a hybrid of the Schilleriana and if I'm not mistaken, it's a direct hybrid. So she does have some influence from the Schilleriana, more or less, but there's something there. So let's learn more about the Schilleriana because it's a species, it's not a hybrid, so a Schilleriana can actually be found in nature. So I did a little digging on the AOS, we learned that the Schilleriana needs a drop in temperature and that it comes from the Philippines. Doesn't really help me much because it doesn't say anything about altitude. Okay, doing some more digging, we find on Orchid Species, which by the way is the most grammatically challenged website of all. I, I wanted to make a video out of it. If you can understand something from that website, you're the real MVP. 
It's just awful. But we find out that the Schilleriana actually grows in altitudes of 0 to 450 meters, which is pretty much sea level, so it's not a high altitude. But it doesn't really give me any specifics about the climate in the Philippines, so let's learn more about the climate of the Philippines. Going on Wikipedia, we learn more about the climate of the Philippines, and we find that they do have two seasons, a sort of a winter and a sort of a summer. Now, it's important to understand that your winter, which might be snowy and freezy, is nowhere near the winter these orchids experience. It's a different climate. So let's see what seasons mean in the Philippines. So we have a rainy season and then a sort of a dry season. Now, the rainy season appears to be during our summertime. Let's call it like that. So making an assumption here, when it's raining, the orchid benefits from a lot of water. So she can actually put her energy into growing leaves, growing roots and so on. Now, come October, November, rain stops and actually there seems to be a change in temperature and climate. Temperature drops to some extent and then there is a little bit of a drought. Well, what better time for pollinators to come out? All summer long the orchid grew, she piled up energy and now in the drier season she's producing a flower because if it's not raining there's a high chance pollinators are out to pollinate flowers. So it's the perfect time for the orchid to bloom. So the keywords here are no more excessive rain and lower temperatures. Now this orchid that I have in front of you is blooming regularly for me. And what tricks it into blooming? Lower temperatures actually. And because the temperatures are lower, I'm actually not watering this orchid too often. Water does not evaporate so fast. And I can get away with actually neglecting this one with watering when it starts to produce a flower spike. Of course, not to the extent of actually making it desiccated, but you know what I mean. So let's think about it. The drop in temperature. Is it really a shock for this orchid since the drop is a few degrees, it's not freezing conditions? I think it's not a shock really, it doesn't make the orchid go into any sorts of confusing shock. No, it's a seasonal change that she experiences in her natural habitat. And these seasonal changes do influence the chemistry inside the orchid. So that external factor determined this response from the orchid, because this is how she is genetically programmed. This is how she evolved according to her climate. Now, because of this example, it's pretty easy to assume that other Phalaenopsis hybrids or species will act pretty much the same. They don't take it as a shock, they take it as a normal seasonal change. In fact, all we do is try to mimic somewhat their natural habitat and by lowering temperature we're mimicking the winter time for this orchid. We don't try to shock it in any way, at least this is how I see things. Now, if you would research other orchids which do take a special care during winter time apart from summertime, you will notice that the particular species in its natural habitat does encounter variations between seasons. And actually, all we're trying to do is to mimic those variations in order to induce certain responses from the orchids. For example, the Dendrobium nobile, if he doesn't feel the stimuli from the outside, he might just keep blooming because it's always warm and the chemical balance inside it does not trigger a bloom. Pretty much this is why we give it the winter rest, but by no means are we trying to shock it in any way. Because in my eyes a shock is totally different and I'm starting to feel that people are shocking their orchids, really shocking their orchids and not just mimicking their natural environment. So let's take some shocked orchids right now and see if they actually bloom. So here is what I consider a shocked orchid. By definition, I think a shock is a sudden and unexpected change in the environment of something. Let's call it like that. In the case of Phalaenopsis, I would describe it as a unexpected turn of events. So this orchid, I consider it shocked. It's one of those orchids that I kind of messed up with. I repotted it too many times. It's had snails, so it needed to be repotted again anyway, long story short. So you can see that the oldest pseudobulbs are pretty big in comparison to the new ones. This is one of the effects of the setbacks. And I did talk about this in yesterday's video. I'll add an annotation somewhere here if you missed it somehow and you just don't feel like clicking through my channel. Okay, so as you can see, this orchid did produce a flower spike. 
Could it be the shock or maybe it's just the fact that this orchid is a little bit more prone to blooming than other orchids? Particularly because it's a hybrid, it's not a species. This is the Painter's Delight hybrid, it's an Oncidium intergeneric. So not only is it a hybrid, it's a complex hybrid intergeneric hybrid. So could this flower spike be due to the shock or other reasons? I don't know, but let's see other shocked orchids. Okay, here's another shocked orchid. I showed you this one yesterday as well. Same story, I mistreated this one. Pretty shocked, pretty set back. Do you see any flower spikes? No, actually this orchid didn't bloom for quite a while. Here is another shocked orchid. You can see the smaller pseudobulbs. Do you see any flower spikes? No, this orchid actually didn't bloom ever since I purchased it. It was very sick, a little bit mistreated. You get the point, no flower spikes. Here's another shocked orchid. Pretty much same reasons. Do you see flower spikes? I don't. So yeah, no flower spikes on this one either. And the list can pretty much continue. Now, all of these orchids were treated pretty much the same. They grow in the same environment, but you can see different responses from them. An orchid that is set back will usually not invest energy into flowering in no way. However, there are some hybrids or species which are more prone to blooming and this is maybe because they can handle vegetative growth and blooming at the same time, but really the vast majority of them will not necessarily bloom when they're sick or they will not make spectacular blooms. However, I wanted to address this because I think I'm seeing more and more people who actually do shock orchids, they don't water them enough or they cut stuff and stuff like that in order to make them bloom when in fact I don't think that will actually work and the fact that people on forums do contribute to this idea is a bit worrying because I really don't think it's true based on what I've seen and based on logic, pure logic. Now, I was telling you the Phalaenopsis orchids are the most deceiving orchids out there. Okay, let's discuss Phalaenopsis orchids. As I was saying, most of the hybrids you can find out there are complex hybrids. They were obtained by people. Now, they've been hybridized to such extent that they create a natural number of flowers, unnatural big flowers, and they bloom unnaturally excessively much. And you might have heard people complaining that their Phalaenopsis bloomed itself to death. It can happen, yes. Because humans actually tried to obtain a Phalaenopsis which is very floriferous, is very hardy to some extent, and it can actually adapt to a lot of environmental conditions. Now, because this is a human-made hybrid, I don't think we can take it as an example for all orchids or all species in any way. Yes, it might retain some of its natural instincts, but some instincts are pretty much gone. So think of tomatoes or vegetables you find on the market. They look pretty and big, but when you beat them, they have no taste, sadly. So that's the human input. Same with Phalaenopsis, it's just the human input. The fact that they can be slightly suffering or more suffering and still put out a pretty impressive bloom has really nothing to do with the fact that it's suffering. It's more about genetics, human input, and so on. I think this is what's happening to Phalaenopsis orchid hybrids. I think if you have a Phalaenopsis species and a complex hybrid, you'll see some little differences. Maybe you will notice that the species is not as floriferous as the hybrid. That's the whole point of hybridization performed by humans, is to obtain more floriferous, more beautiful uh, specimens and so on. But this has some side effects. So for this reason, I don't think taking a Phalaenopsis complex hybrid as an example for everything is a very good idea. I really think Phalaenopsis should not be an example for pretty much anything, really. You can take a Phalaenopsis species, yes, but very complex hybrids, I don't think they're an example. Oncidiums, come close, really. Now, I will give it. There is a bit of truth in the stress thing, but it's not what you think, really. So here I have an orchid that I tried to uh, divide and promote some new growth, and I actually split it in two. And what this orchid actually did is to create a new growth I don't know if you can see it, from the split here. So if you consider the vision a sort of a stress or a shock, yeah, it might be a sort of a stress or a shock which determines a certain response from the orchid. And the logical response for an orchid which is separated is to live. 
and what better way to live than to create new growth as the new growth will create a new root system it will feed and still grow and so on it's a sort of a survival instinct but in this case yeah you can say that the shock of actually um, separating the orchid induced a response in the form of new growth for this orchid so if you want to refer to shocks in this matter yes but this shock is a sort of a calculated shock. If I would just chop off one of the pseudobulbs without regards to anything, it might not end well because the orchid might not propagate itself. So this is a controlled shock, let's call it like that. But yeah, you can consider this a shock. So as a conclusion, I am not the type that believes shocks actually induce blooming on orchids. There are, however, cases in which orchids might find themselves in a situation where their response will be to create a flower spike in lack of a better response to survival. If an orchid is just so sick that it does not have energy to produce new roots or new leaves or growth or stuff like that, it might create a flower spike, yes. But really, from my experience, it's it doesn't happen all that often. It doesn't happen with all orchids. Usually if an orchid is stressed or sick, it will try to survive by putting out roots and leaves first. Because a sick orchid will not be able to produce a quality bloom. Maybe it will produce a smaller bloom, maybe it will not have a fragrance, it will not perform correctly, it will not have energy to produce the seed pods and stuff like that. This is stuff that the orchids actually assess uh, with themselves in a way. In lack of better words, I'll just call it like that. So yeah, there are some instances where in lack of a better response as a final resort, they will try to put out a flower, but it's really not what they would prefer because that flower might indeed be faulty and it will not be pollinated. So the most common response to sickness is roots and new growths, really, from everything that I've seen. The fact that sometimes they do produce some flowers after a shock, I don't think it happens all that often. I really don't think it's a rule. And I strongly suggest that you do not shock your orchids, like properly shock them in order to get a bloom, because I just think you're gonna do much worse than good. If your orchid does not bloom, try to work on external factors. See if your care is correct. See if your orchid actually needs something in the environment like a drop of temperature or more light and stuff like that try to investigate more about the species that you have before you actually go and put your orchid in the fridge because trust me if you put a phalaenopsis orchid in the fridge at three degrees it's not gonna end well because winter time is not the same for her as for you as i was saying so yeah before you go and shock orchids uh, try to think twice and try to research more about your orchid before you actually do it. And as for forums and people trying to bring down beginners, uh, it's one of the reasons why I don't use forums. I do read them, some discussions are very interesting, but because I don't know who the people are, what gives them the right to be smug to me, I just, you know, prefer not to. That's really just my choice. If you enjoy forums, go. They're a pool of knowledge sometimes, really. They're great. But, you know, if you encounter people who are just smug to you, just ask them questions, tricky questions. See if they can answer those tricky questions. If they cannot, you know, it's not worth wasting your time. And don't be put off. We all make mistakes. We all learn as we go. And mistakes are a good teacher, really. So yeah, this is the subject for today. Thank you for watching. I hope it helped you out. This is how I see things and how I think things do better for me. And it's up to you to try it out and to draw your own conclusions. Alrighty, thank you for watching. If you'd like to see more videos from me, simply subscribe to my channel. I post on a regular basis. Also, feel free to leave me comments, suggestions or questions you might have about orchids in the comment section below and I'll get back to you or make a video for you. If you click on the left side of your screen, you'll be directed to orchinature.com where you will find care sheets, identification sheets and also you can talk to us in the forum section. If you click on the right side of your screen, you'll watch another orchid video. Thank you for joining. I'll see you next time. Bye!